It is 22 arc time. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the build I just completed. Gavin Yu here from ultimatereloader.com. I just got set up and got hands on with 22 arc. And that's what I've got right here is the build that I just completed. I got my reamer on Friday. Here's the rifle on Monday. Literally, this thing is awesome. In this video, I wanted to introduce you to 22 arc. Now, I don't have all of the publicly available specifications. There's some secret information in this folder right here that I got from Hornady. Uh, but I do want to do my best to articulate what we know about 22 arc at this point. I'll have a follow on video with all of the detailed specifications when everything is fully released uh, to the public. I want to guide you through my bolt action build, talk about considerations that you're going to need to think about if you want to put together a 22 arc rifle, either on the AR side or on the bolt action rifle side, and then share some shooting results because this thing shoots. Okay, so 22 arc quick facts. So it was announced October 26, 2023 at the NASGW. Uh, uses a 22 caliber bullet, as you might expect. Case length is 1.525 inches. Cartridge overall length is 2.260 inches. Anybody that knows the AR-15 well knows that that is maximum magazine length for any cartridge that's going to fit in an AR-15. So obviously this cartridge, like the 6.5 Grendel and like the 6 Arc, was designed around the AR-15. That's not going to stop us from doing a bolt action build. <laughs> the case head is 441. So this is the same as 7.62 by 39, 6.5 Grendel and 6 Arc. Shoulder angle is 30 degrees uses a small rifle primer, and a one in seven twist rate is suggested. And this is where we've got something very specific on our hands. I got this barrel blank from Ballistic Advantage. I waited for one with one in seven twist. I got it because I don't want to be restricted on any of the full capabilities of the 22 arc cartridge in this rifle here. And we expect to observe about 2,800 feet per second with an 88 grain projectile. That is some good velocity given the weight of that projectile and really the 22 arc is about yet again like some of the other specialty cartridges pushing the long range capabilities of a cartridge that's designed for the AR-15 right in a 22 caliber configuration. So that's 22 arc quick facts like I said we'll follow up with more information uh, when it's all disclosed to the general public. Sammy that kind of thing. Okay so Bill materials for this build. Uh, we've got the BAT TR Action. Talk more about that in just a moment. The uh, Foundation Centurion stock. Again, I have an entire uh, dedicated slide on that as well. Ballistic Advantage 1 and 7 Heavy Contour uh, Barrel Blank. This was my first time trying a Ballistic Advantage uh, Barrel Blank for a bolt action build. I've had very good luck with their barrels for ARs. Got to meet the guys at the uh, Moab event that I went on with the Wheeler team. Uh, really great people and really liking how this barrel machined and how it's shooting. Hawkins Precision Bottom Metal. So this is the detachable box magazine, the M5 cut. Uh, super, super high quality stuff from Hawkins Precision. Stuff works great. The, the finger mag release always is spot on. Uh, this is a custom AICS magazine. I started with a 308 mag and took it apart and converted it for 224 Valkyrie. That was based on a kit from Primal Rights. Greg Dykstra over there at Primal Rights has those uh, specialty parts. Uh, it works for the Valkyrie, also works really great for the 22 arc. And then we've also got the EC Tuner Brake V2. When I'm shooting factory ammunition and I'm trying to get good groups, I like to use the EC Tuner Brake because it gives me some harmonic tuning options that can perform uh, much what I would accomplish with uh, the load development, that kind of thing, which is kind of where I intend to go after this. Okay, so that's the parts and the bill of materials for the rifle itself. Now, in terms of the tools, you might have seen here on the channel, recently we got the all new Precision Matthews PM 1440 HVT-2 with the heavy cast iron base. This is an expensive upgrade. It is a very worthwhile expensive upgrade because it greatly enhances the rigidity of the machine. And it's already more rigid than my PM1440 GT because 
this is a more beefy version essentially of that lathe, plus it has variable speed. So I am really, really liking this lathe. We're using Manson Reamers. This is essentially right here, uh, the rifle builder's kit that Hornady handed out to select companies that were helping to get the industry ready for the 22 arc. So we've got the Manson Ruffer for 22 arc, the Manson Finisher Reamer for 22 arc, and then these are 6.5 Grendel go and no-go gauges. What does that tell you? That tells you that 22 arc shares the same base to datum and the same shoulder angle as the 6.5 Grendel. It is more or less a necked down 6.5 Grendel. So uh, that's the reamers and gauges. Again, that was a part of the, the Hornady Rifle Builders pack as a part of the private preview. Uh, the other part of that was the information that is in this folder here. Okay. So we've also got the rigid reamer holder. Now, if you're really interested in chambering rifles, you're gonna to wanna to check out the video that I filmed at Bruce Tom's garage. Bruce Tom is the owner of Bat Machine, maker of this action right here, and he has gotten me absolutely hooked on this methodology of machining a rigid reamer holder in place. You put a drill in your three jaw truck, you drill it out, and then you put a boring head and you do single point boring to bore this absolutely collinear with the lathe spindle. Okay, so that's gonna do two things. This holds onto your reamer more securely, more rigidly than really any other kind of reamer holder out there. If it's a floater or if it's an adjustable reamer, any of those things aren't gonna be this rigid. And then this also accounts for any alignment uh, errors between your tailstock and your spindle. You can hear the difference when you're cutting a chamber with one of these rigid reamer holders. The only downside here is that you need an incredibly precise fit. Do you see that? It forms an air seal. And if you don't have a really close fit, you're gonna to have to bore a different one. Like if there is a variation in the shank diameter on the reamer, that kind of thing. So it's a very exacting thing. And then we've got my Cerakote uh, booth up at the mountain shop. I'm planning to build a big one here until then I'm using the one up the hill and then I'm also using these short action customs modular barrel vise and modular action wrench. Totally love this setup. It's totally dialed for basically all of the rifles that I work on quick and easy to use. Okay so that is the tools. A little bit more about the bat TR action. I absolutely love this action. So it's a Remington 700 footprint uh, it's got an integral recoil lug, integral 20 MOA rail, fluted modular bolt, and we used that feature here. They turned one for this 762 by 39 bolt head, the 441 diameter. Uh, we used that for the six arc build, and we're using it again for the 22 arc build. Now, if I wanted to use a 308 case rim, like for a 6.5 Creedmoor or something like that, this front section of the bolt comes off, and I can use the one that I have with the 308 bolt face on it. So. That uh, is a really great feature and comes in handy for these specialty projects like this because at the end of the day, uh, let's say you're gonna do an AR, you're gonna need a 22 arc barrel, you're gonna need a 6.5 Grendel bolt carrier group, and you're gonna need the specific magazine, right? On the bolt action side, you need the proper bolt face, which can be a little difficult with bolt action rifles. This is not a totally standard bolt action type of configuration. You're gonna need a magazine that can feed it, and of course you're gonna chamber the barrel. So it's more or less the, the same kind of situation, just with uh, different parts in some cases. We've also got the tactical bolt knob. This is uh, CNC aluminum, and it's threaded so that you can take it off if you wanted to change that out. The uh, barrel threading is one and a sixteenth by 18. And we've got a removable and adjustable trigger hanger. It's so easy to take the trigger off. I took it off just for ease when I was spinning the action on and off the barrel when I was working with the barrel on the lathe, put it right back on. It only takes a minute to take it off or replace it uh, once you've got those pins in and the trigger is pre-configured. So I like the Bat TR so much. Uh, the custom rifles that we ship to customers, the super, super, super premium rifles, we use the Bat TR. And we've got more rifles planned for now. We have a target model that's based on the TR. Absolutely love it. Okay, Foundation Centurion Micarta stock. I've got a couple of videos covering this 
the stock itself, and then we have also an overview of all of the stocks from Foundation, which are all built using a very special material called micarta. Denim and resin, it looks like wood. It kind of acts like wood in that it dampens vibrations, uh, but it doesn't have the negative bits around the humidity sensitivity, the twisting and warping and that kind of thing, temperature sensitivity. It's a homogenous material that is incredibly stable. And uh, one of the things that I really like about these stocks is how precise the inlets are. When I'm tightening those action screws, I feel it tighten down, hit, and then kind of stop. There's not a lot of squish, there's not a lot of bend, and that's what I really like. So as you can see here, this is set up like a, a PRS rig uh, in terms of the different features that the Centurion has. The Centurion has the vertical grip is one of the ways that it's different from the Genesis 2, which you've seen here on the channel quite a bit. Uh, but this is a stock that's going to perform really well off the bench, uh, shooting off of barricades, all that kind of stuff. I wanted something nice and heavy and nice and stable for the bench shooting portion uh, of this particular project. Okay, so we got the barrel loaded up in the Precision Matthews PM1440 HVT-2. It's kind of a long name. And got it all ready to roll. Uh, here's kind of a quick summary of the different steps. So I do a quick pre-dial. I dial the outboard end and the breech end, you know, to say a half thousandth of an inch or so. I uh, drill out the bulk of the chamber so I can get in there with uh, an indicator and read off the lands and the grooves. I do my final dial, get it down to under one ten thousandth of an inch uh, of total indicator reading on the grooves. Uh, bore that pre-drill true. So when the reamer hits the chamber, that, that pre-drilled and pre-bored area of the chamber, we need to make sure that it's running absolutely dead true so that the reamer doesn't pick up any kind of wobble, chatter, that kind of thing. We turn the tenon down, uh, including the reliefs on the inboard and outboard side. Thread the tenon. Again, this is one and one sixteenth by 18. And then we cut the chamber. And uh, for this particular operation, I'm not using pressure flush. I don't have that set up down on my 1440 lathes. That's only on the TL1660 Precision Matthews that I have up at the mountain shop. So you're going to take 200 thousandths, pull the reamer out, clean it off, clean out the bore. Take another 200 thousandths, then maybe 100, then maybe 75. You know, you kind of progressively take less and less a plunge each time because the reamer is picking up more chips each time as it starts to engage that full profile of the chamber. Uh, and Bat Machine is great because they give you this nice print. And when you have this print to go off of, you can actually take your go gauge and figure out exactly how deep you need to ream your chamber based on how far recessed it is here. On other types, it's going to be sticking out. This has a counter bore for the recessed bolt nose. So anyhow, they give you a guide on where to go. I calculated, I think I was within one thousandth of that. I screwed the action uh, onto the barrel and checked with my go gauge to see how far I had to go. And uh, I'm using a special kind of a setup where the lathe carriage stays and is locked and is zeroed out. And then I bring the tail stock up. It contacts the carriage in a very specific spot with the hitting point. And then I use a tailstock DRO, digital readout, to know exactly how uh, relatively deep the plunge is for that chambering reamer. And then I can figure out, based on the gap between the receiver and the barrel shoulder, how much further I need to go to be at zero, right? And then I have to count for the crush of the barrel when it's tightened, that kind of thing. Uh, this is one of the exacting parts, one of the super critical parts, is cutting the depth of the chamber for proper headspace. So after that's done, uh, go ahead and do any finishing and polishing. Uh, at this point, the breech end is done. Then I took the barrel out, flipped it around. I actually cut about an inch off the end, dialed it in. Uh, you could part off the end. I used a bandsaw to cut the barrel down to length, uh, faced off the end zeroed my z-axis, turned the tenon down to the appropriate diameter. Now for this, I could have gone with either half 28 or 5 8 24. I chose to go with 5 8 24 just because I have a lot of muzzle devices that are set up to use that. And if I do have need for a 22 caliber specific muzzle device that uses half 28, I can always turn this down uh, to half 28 after the fact. 
5 8 24 is just kind of our standard, uh, so that's what I tend to go with. Cut the thread reliefs, thread the muzzle, cut the recess. Uh, the recessed crown is good for protection for the end of the muzzle if you happen to be using it in a configuration without a brake or a suppressor. I don't plan to, but I do it anyway. <laughs> that finished up the muzzle end. And at this point, it was time for Cerakote and laser engraving. So I absolutely love Cerakote. Uh, this is Coyote Tan. It is H2235. Really nice color combo. I was kind of thinking, is this going to look right next to a black action? You know what? I think it looks great bookended with black action and a black EC tuner brake V2. I think it looks absolutely awesome. Uh, so Cerakoting barrels is not rocket science, but it does require a high level of attention to detail. I do not coat threads typically. And that is true on the muzzle end and on the breech end. And this is stainless steel, so it doesn't even matter. You don't need any kind of corrosion protection. So uh, degreased and masked the barrel for blasting. Right, we're gonna take 100 grit aluminum oxide in a blasting cabinet and blast it to give the surface a profile. And that profile mechanically is what the Cerakote grabs onto when it's applied, that's gonna give you your adhesion. Then after the blaster, I mask the barrel, clean everything off, remask it, uh, and rack it. Racking it is getting it hung up where you can get it in front of your filter box and go ahead and spray it. So I had the uh, H235 on a mixer for about a half an hour, uh, mixed it all up in the gun, applied three coats, nice thin coats, uh, let it flash for 15 minutes and then threw it in the oven for a two hour cure at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the next morning I took the barrel down to the shop, tightened it down, checked headspace and uh, engraved what you see here with the 50 watt fiber laser. This is ATF compliant. It goes about eight thousandths of an inch deep. I actually threw a chunk on the lathe one time and turned it down to see exactly how deep my engraving was for these particular settings. Uh, nice and clear. I like to provide all of the details on the barrel, the finish length, twist rate. That way, if I'm going to check load data, I know exactly what I need for bullet weight and I can evaluate my performance relative to the barrel length without having to measure. We have a ton of rifles here at Ultimate Reloader, so this helps us tame the chaos, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, and uh, for installing the barrel, Definitely love that. Short Action Customs Bravo Barrel Vice. Honestly, I think installing the barrel is kind of fun. I know I might be a little bit weird in that way, but from Short Action Customs, I have this nice pedestal for my Bravo Barrel Vice. The Bravo is the brute. I also have the modular. I have that up at the mountain shop, and it's awesome. The, but the Bravo, man, it's just like an absolute tank. Recently, I've done a few barrels from factory rifles, whether it be Vanguard, whether it be Mark V, uh, three of them for a customer, and I had to absolutely beat on an external action wrench to get the action on off and did not budge. Totally amazing gripping power with this thing. You've got two bushings. The bushings are available in different diameters for different diameter barrel shanks. This is a 1.2 inch barrel shank. My method with the Bravo is pretty simple. I insert the barrel with the bushings and the drywall tape. I take a Bondis hex key one of the T-handle type. I tighten it about as tight as I can just with my hands on each side. And uh, that does it. It never slips on me. Uh, I have adjusted my torque. I used to torque at 90 foot pounds, but I don't really see a need for that. So I torque at 70 foot pounds. A uh, little easier to get off. And then also there's a little bit less crush. So a little bit less difference between hand tightening on the lathe and fully tightening uh, afterwards. Anywhere in that 70 to 90 range though, I don't think there's a big difference in, in terms of clocking position or anything like that. Uh, just a slight tweak that I've done. Uh, the Short Action Customs Modular Action Wrench, I have the number four head, which is for the BAT TR action, and a bunch uh, as well for other actions. And that's why I like it. Instead of having a whole bunch of action wrenches in you know, a drawer, you just have the little replaceable modular heads, which is, is really cool. So when I install the barrel, I also do my final check on the headspace. I did a little bit of a tightening with, on the lathe with the action wrench just to make sure I was going to land where I wanted to land and I liked what I was seeing there. Uh, but the final check comes when the barrel is fully torqued onto the action and everything was 
absolutely perfect at this point. So the finished product I think looks absolutely amazing. Uh, this is my style of rifle. Totally love to shoot this. Be great to shoot off of a tripod at a Coyote. Great to shoot on the bench for low development. Uh, great to shoot prone, long range to hit targets. Uh, for a 22 caliber long range rifle, this is a really, really great setup. And the 22 arc just really doesn't have much recoil at all. Okay. So very, very simple break-in process. Today it was snowing up at the Ultimate Reloader Mountain Ranch. So I have less than two boxes of ammo through the rifle. Uh, really liking what I'm seeing so far. I took some shots and then also did a little bit of tuning on the EC tuner. Uh, it didn't fluctuate as wildly as some of the other setups and that makes sense because we've got a small 22 caliber bullet going down this massive very, very stiff barrel. So I think there's a little bit less uh, barrel whip compared to other configurations. And between the 88 grain ELDM match factory ammunition and the 75 grain ELDM factory ammunition, slight preference so far to the 88 ELDM. I'm not sure there's gonna be a huge difference in the end. Honestly, I was just kind of getting things broken in and sighted in, didn't have a chance to really get super serious with it, but sub quarter inch group right off the bat with the 88 ELDM factory ammunition. This was after a couple different settings on the EC tuner break. It did, it did make a difference. Once I got it stabilized, three different positions had similar groups with the 75 ELDM. Now, the I got good chrono data for the 88 ELDM. It was over 11 shots and I had 2822.3 feet per second and the ES was only 7.6 feet per second. So this uh, stuff really, really seems to be good. And they're seeing 2,820 feet per second uh, muzzle velocity. I've got 2.3 feet per second over that. That is a really, really good benchmark right on the box from Hornady. And the fact that we're less than three feet per second difference uh, is, is absolutely awesome in the field. Now. As I break in this barrel, I could get another 100 feet per second. Who knows? This is new to me, the ballistic advantage barrel blanks. Uh, not totally sure, uh, but that would put us well over what Hornady said. Now Hornady is probably using a 24 inch barrel on a bolt gun, kind of like this. So it's just really nice to see things line up. Now the 75 grain ELDM ammunition Hornady lists at 3,075 feet per second. I looked at the chronograph and I did not see anything that high, but I had mixed data on the chronograph between these two uh, before I reset the chronograph just for the 88 ELDM. So what is next? What's next is load development. And I got some cool stuff to play with here. We've got the new 62 grain ELVT bullets, right? I really want to use these on some coyotes. I've got 80 grain ELDX hunting bullets. I think that would also be a fabulous coyote round or who knows rock chucks, whatever kind of armating we're going to be doing. I think uh, this rifle, this cartridge would be absolutely awesome with. And then I also thought, what about the AR? I think the AR has huge potential here and this cartridge really uh, provides an interesting value proposition for the AR. Specifically, if you really like the six arc, if you want something a little bit higher velocity and potentially a little bit lighter on recoil, this 22 arc could be the solution. Uh, it'd be really interesting to throw the 22 arc and the six arc side by side on the recoil rig. We could see exactly what's happening if we do that. Um, I really like the versatility of this cartridge as well. Can you take your 6.5 Grendel cases and neck them down to 22? I believe so. Now, again, I don't have the SAMI information. I just have some pre-release info in here that's SAMI-ish uh, that was given to the industry ahead of time, and I'm not gonna share anything uh, until we have that SAMI information. So as soon as that happens, uh, which we do expect, uh, I'll plan to do a follow-up video and go a bit more in depth on this cartridge to talk about it uh, more broadly end to end. So uh, you're, Definitely gonna to wanna to check out the other incarnation of this rifle, different stock, different barrel, uh, slightly different cartridge, right? The six arc, uh, same action, 
pretty much the same rifle, just kind of in, in, in different dressing. Uh, we had a lot of fun with that. It was a hit at the Rock Chuck Olympics. It was the only rifle that was able to hit Harold, the evil Rock Chuck, the four foot rock, tall Rock Chuck at uh, 1,280 yards. In fact, that six arc incarnation of this rifle hit Harold on shots number one, two, and three that I tried. Absolutely amazing. It was subsonic at that distance. You could barely hit it here. Uh, barely hear it hit the steel. Lots and lots of fun. Now the competitors at the Rock Chuck Olympics didn't have such fortunate conditions as I did. So it was harder, but several people got hits, which was really, really cool to see. Okay, so that's kind of my initial introduction for you all to the 22 arc. This is my first taste of it literally today, a couple hours ago, uh, to go up and shoot it. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this. It was really fun to build the rifle. It was really fun to shoot today. It appears to be a tack driver. Can't wait to do a little bit of uh, some load development and you know fire forming brass and, and, and loading, that kind of thing. Here's what I'd like to know is, what would you guys like to see? Do you wanna see the AR on the channel? I don't know if it'd be one that I would build or work with the industry to highlight and quantify and test, put it to the test. Uh, do you guys want to see some hunting action? We are working on that. I don't know if I'm going to be successful or not. The varminting hunting, the coyote hunting thing is something that I'm just kind of getting into and I'm looking for that group of people that can really get me onto some dogs and, and, and help uh, really highlight some cool stuff with that. Uh, if there's other bullets, other loads that you'd like to see, drop that comment. I will put it into the hat in terms of our ideas for content and whatnot. Appreciate you all watching. If you have experiences related to the 22 arc here early on that you want to share, again, drop a comment and uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.